You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. Before we dive into this powerful episode, please remember to subscribe to our channels and to give us a five-star rating on iTunes and to continue hustling. This episode is sponsored by Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Sherman College of Chiropractic, New Patients in a Box, The Influencer Authority Podcast Training, Mango Voice, Community Healthcare Resources, Life Chiropractic College West, Let's Hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 428 of the Cairo Hustle Podcast. I am your producer, Luke Millette, and here's your host, James Chester. So today we have the opportunity of interviewing Shelly Latandras, and if you want to hear about understanding the neck and nervous system to recover from concussion, stay tuned. Welcome back. This is another episode of the Cairo Hustle Podcast. Uh, today we have 427th episode of this show. Um, but before we get into with Shelly Latandras, I think I said that pron- the pronunciation correctly. She's like, you can say it English or French, whatever is best. <laughs> um, but she's better known as OT Shelly and, uh, you know, occupational therapist. So it's our first occupational therapist that we've actually had on the Cairo Hustle podcast. So I'm really excited to have her on to share some knowledge with you guys about um, her recovery from concussion, her um, her relationship with chiropractic as uh, colleagues and patient. And uh, but before we get into the, the the question set, I do want to let you know the big why around Cairo Hustle. Why do we do what we do? Well, we um, protect freedom of speech. And I think as uh, the past couple of years, we've all kind of understood that freedom of speech is uh, utmost important and that we have to uh, have, uh, you know, the ability to say what we want and uh, have the ability to be heard, acknowledged and seen um, with our own voice. So that, that's so important to us. And chiropractically speaking, um, we support subluxation based chiropractic. Um, we believe that when somebody isn't subluxated, their body is more healthy. And uh, we believe in innate intelligence and universal intelligence and that when man or woman is adjusted with a chiropractor, it connects man or woman, the spiritual to man or woman, the physical. And I think that that's really important for people to understand, too, that it's not just about being out of pain or treating chiropractic like an expensive Advil. Um, It's something about a lifestyle. And uh, chiropractic on the other end of the spectrum is more philosophical and we do protect the sacred trust. And if you guys don't know what any of this means, go to your favorite search engine and look and find out what sacred trust is, any intelligence, universal intelligence, or subluxation. And uh, with that, I want to welcome O.T. Shelley to the show. Hello. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm excited and nervous to be on a show, which is all Kairos, and here I am as this lonely O.T. But I think I have a great story to tell, and it does connect to chiropractic and the whole um, philosophy that we sort of share. So first of all, um, I just wanted to give a quick little sentence about what is occupational therapy in case anybody um, doesn't know. It's it's really a, a really diverse creative um, role where we're helping people move towards their potential and, and, and getting them to engage in meaningful activity in their lives. And um, so, so an OT takes a client-centered model and we basically are helping people recovery from injury and disability through daily activities. So that's, that's what OT is, um, just to file that away. And then I wanna tell you um, a little bit about my personal story as a, it, it's a concussion story and how it relates to my practice, how it changed my practice as a healthcare practitioner and how it really, Um, connected me with the practice of chiropractic and how uh, I found all of this commonality. So should I just uh, start from uh, the beginning? Um, Well, I I think that the first thing to to jump into is uh, Mm -hmm. thank you you for giving like the the opener. Um, But Mm -hmm. I'm I'm really curious for you to share with our audience about how you've come from injury of concussion Mm -hmm. and and, and how you have uh, come back to your road to recovery. Okay, and, and and the head trauma involved with that, and yes, and and, and, how, and how you've been able to uh, um, follow a path to recovery. Fantastic. Um, so this started in uh, 
back in January of 2017. So a few years back, but not that far back. Um, I've always lived a really active lifestyle. I'm a, I'm a little bit of an adventure adrenaline junkie, you might say, sort of like um, I'll run, not walk, I'll rock climb instead of hike kind of thing. Um, and I love skiing, cycling, traveling, all that. But in January 2017, I was trying out something different from my usual downhill. I was trying out skate skiing. And um, although I really enjoy the, the uphill, um, like many things in life, the downhill, uh, I became overconfident on the downhill, I would say. <laughs> and so anyway, um, that resulted in a crash. I, my skis caught an edge and uh, there was ice and I basically just flipped, landed on my head, sort of did a tumbling somersault over that. And um, I must, I maybe lost consciousness briefly, but not for very long. And as you'll learn for, about concussion, that doesn't really make a difference in the resulting injury. Um, and I was probably going about 49 kilometers an hour according to my Strava. So in, in skate skiing and cross country, you're not wearing a helmet. So there's that added, you know, head trauma. And basically somehow I made my way to the bottom of that run. A friend came in and said, are you okay? I said, yeah, uh, I just hit my head. And, but when I, be, when we got down to the mountain, um, then I sort of began to become dis disoriented and confused and scared and foggy. And that is where my journey on concussion basically began. And I really had no idea what I was in for. I really didn't because um, even though I work in brain injury and in neurology and people with disability, I've never had a concussion myself. And like, like many injuries, as many of your um, you know, guests have talked about, you don't really know what it's like until you're in it. Um, so after, after my concussion, I spent the next few weeks, which kind of turned into months, just scrambling on my own and not really being able to tolerate a ton of input um, or, or a lot of people. My family was even too loud, too demanding. And I ended up actually staying in a friend's attic for a few weeks. I don't even remember how long. And just focusing on, you know, uh, reading and exercise and walking and sleep and health and the things that I, I guess I was seeking control of my own nervous system is what I was doing um, because I knew um, that, that that's what I needed to get control of what was going on. So looking back now, um, you know, I find it actually kind of unbelievable that as a healthcare practitioner that I hid out and didn't seek help in the beginning. And I've even worked in brain injury, but I guess I was, I didn't want to be injured. So I didn't want to talk about it. Part of it. And my brain was also wasn't working very well where I was living um, services were really fragmented, so it required a lot of searching to find somebody who knew about concussion. And, and so I was indeed scrambling. So basically what I did is I, I, I returned to what I know, nature, exercise, yoga, um, optimal functioning of daily activities. And, and then I just focused on these things, which did end up being, you know, pretty good therapy, but I knew that something was still missing. I needed to find some, some kind of help. So, um, I wish I could say that was the end of my concussions, <laughs> but unfortunately I was re-injured several months later. And again, several months later after that, basically, um, running on the beach and through forest trails and then hitting branches, you know, so sort of becoming decapitated idea, um, that happened more than once a couple of times and looking back now i think it's because my vision and my vestibular systems were off and so um so that's probably part of what happened with those injuries but at the time i didn't really have a handle on that and so so there is where about six months in eight months in i i was not getting better i was i was worse and um and it was really frustrating it's like being in a fog you're in a brain fog with a headlamp and you're looking for something, you know, really just, you know, float tank should I go to, and here I am in healthcare, right? Going to all these different uh, things, cranial sacral, vision therapy, vestibular therapy, what should I do? I was overwhelmed of what I really 
what I really needed and I wasn't finding a person who sort of clicked for me of what my philosophy was. And it was, it was also frustrating because I kept thinking, why can't I treat myself? I should be able to treat myself. I've treated tons of people with disability, with, with nervous system issues, with stroke, with brain injury. Um, you know, but, but the reality is we all need to find somebody to support us. Right. And, and so like, we're not self-sufficient and, um, coming to come to coming to the Cairo part, first of all, as a yoga practitioner and an occupational therapist, I really had like a deeply rooted belief in that we heal ourselves and we, we need to be empowered and we need to have a mind body connection. And that is, that's the way out of any injury. And I luckily, I kept coming back to that and not listening to the neurologists who were like, here, have an antidepressant, you know, um, that sort of thing. You know, it, it, I just, I kept coming back to my root of that meshed with my yoga and my OT teaching. And this is where I met. So this, this part of my concussion is where I sort of connected with chiropractors. Did you have and any questions up to there? I, I just have a, a quick lead yeah. into this. Um, in chiropractic philosophy, yeah. um, chiropractors believe that the body heals from above, down, inside mm. out. Mm. The, body needs, the, the body needs nothing extra in it. 100%. Sim simply no interference. No interference. So exactly. once the interference is cleared, the body has a, a chance to adapt and come back to homeostasis, which is a big medical word, but it means balance of health. Yes. And I think a lot of times when people, like even chiropractors, I bet all of them that are watching this, they wish that they could adjust themselves, mm. um, but they can't. They can't. So back to your early story about wishing that you could like treat yourself and, you know, get yourself better. Um, a lot of times it becomes uh, outside um, needing somebody else to take care of you. Yes. And uh, I say this time and time again, but most people just don't know where to go or who to trust. That's right. And, and you being the provider and the practitioner, you wish that you could take care of yourself, but you can't. That's um, right. No one else can see your blind spots for you or you can't see your own blind spots. You need somebody else to see them for you. And it sounds like that was a real concern of yours. Um, you know, after the first, uh, head knock or concussion, and then you went through and had uh, a couple others because of mm -hmm. your blind spots, you couldn't see them. Exactly. And, and it seems like you, uh, damaged or injured yourself further. Um, and then you were looking for solutions and, uh, maybe that's where we tie in this beautiful world of chiropractic now. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I, I think that when people know the chiropractic philosophy, um, that once the subluxations are removed and corrected, vertebral subluxations, um, I think there's nothing more damaging to a human body than a vertebral subluxation. Because what happens is when the vertebral subluxation is there, there's a misalignment in that joint, that joint within the spine causing some type of a symptom to someone's body. And I think that just in general, anybody's more healthy when they're not subluxated. And when a chiropractor actually corrects that, now the body has a chance to reconnect the neuron signals to every organ, tissue, and cell in the body. And I think that that's what really makes chiropractic so beautiful and powerful is when a practitioner corrects that vertebral subluxation, clears the body out of that interference, the body comes back to this powerful position of actually adapting and healing the way it's supposed to instead of being subluxated and allowing the body to be um, full of thoughts, traumas, and toxins, and, and to have this poor cycle of influence in it. And now we start to recover. And yes. uh, I, I think that that's a really cool place that we're at now is uh, how did chiropractic play in your recovery? Yes. Thank you so much for sharing that information with our listeners, because that is exactly what happened. I was doing everything right that I knew as my own healthcare practitioner, but I was missing a piece because I didn't have somebody assessing me and um, saying, why am I just not getting better? And I'm doing this stuff. So um, first I found a couple of concussion chiropractors online. Okay, so who provided concussion education? And I and I was fortunate to um, you know follow a lot of the the education that's given by these online um, uh, concussion specializing chiropractors, and that's been that that was fantastic 
fell in line again with what I needed, but I still was looking for a person. And when I walked into um, my local um, chiropractic office and I met Dr. Sam Coots, I remember think I remember telling her, I remember telling her, so here's the thing. I think that I've disconnected my head with my neck. This is what I told her because I said, they're not connected. My, I'm a bobblehead. My head is balancing on the top of my spine and they're not connected. And then when she didn't just jump on top of me and start doing adjustments. She, she asked like my story. Right. And, and when I told her about the ski crash and then running into giant driftwood, you know, at full speed logs, she's like, well, you know, let's look at the mechanics of that. And then let's look at all of the problems that you're having. And, and that was huge just to, just to, you know, even ask about my life and what, how it happened and, and the story behind it. So that's the best description of what it felt like coming in. And I explained to her about how I kept getting recurring, like somebody would slam on the brakes, you're driving with an L driver or, or, or whatever. <laughs> and, um, the brakes of the car would slam and and I would have a little bobblehead jolt and then I would literally be weeks out of work in a brain fog and this kept happening and so um and everybody kept telling me that that was anxiety that's what the doctors neur neur neurologists said and my friends know like I'm not really an anxious person over that and I knew it wasn't because it was so physical it was so like no I can't do my taxes. No, I can't answer my emails. Like I can't even think straight. It was just a, just a fog. So anyway, I was fortunate to have met a great Cairo and basically, basically the same beliefs when she took a look at this. And when I told her how it felt and, and we had a discussion together as healthcare pr practitioners and as me as a patient about the neck is the gateway to the brain. And, um, and so we need to look at your neck, right? And, and we need to look at your spine and we need to look at your nervous system. And um, yeah, and, and, and again about that we have the tools to heal in our bodies, but, but until your whole housing for your nervous system is worked out, i.e. The, the, the spine and the head, and the head um, you know, you can't, you can't get your maximum healing. So not only did I appreciate um, like I was shocking actually that no neurologist had ever explained anything that way. No doctor, you know, and not only did I appreciate that in education from a Cairo, but also just the encouragement, you know, um, and, and the personality of talking to me like another, uh, like a person, like another colleague, um, like a friend, you know, instead of, uh, how is your pain today on a scale of one to 10? she would say, you know, how's your new bike? Have you been out on it? You know, and, and where did you walk that day? And that, that's a big deal for a practitioner because it makes you feel like a person and like a, not a diagnosis. So, so basically I was treated, um, for neck, you know, subluxation and, and worked out where, where the problems were. C1 um, mainly, and, and I could see the differences. I could feel the differences after an adjustment in, in my clarity, even in my brain fog, um, it was lifted. And then we, and then, and then it made sense to me because the brain and the spinal cord like are connected, they run the body. So the head and the neck are the housing for that. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like so, the house. So I'm yeah. going to jump in quick. Yeah, and just, go for and it. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to talk like, uh, I'm a layman. I'm not a chiropractor. That's okay. Um, yeah. But, but I understand the profession quite well. I understand. Yeah. Anatomy, oh, yeah. Anatomy, I understand anatomy and physiology. You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. This episode is sponsored by imaging services. Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Sherman College of Chiropractic, New Patients in a Box, The Influencer Authority Podcast Training, Mango Voice, Community Healthcare Resources, 
Life Chiropractic College West. Let's hustle. Um, I, I love to get people into practices. Um, I schedule people in. Um, I just went to Alaska to the state fair and scheduled in 604 new patients in 14 days. And I'm going to share with you a little bit about my sales cycle and why it's effective and exactly what you were looking for. And mm -hmm. I go find people. I go find people like you that need help. So mm. um, first things first, she cleared your atlas is what I'm taking away from this. Yes. Um, you are not your symptoms. So many times people think that they're a diagnosis and that's their identity. Mm -hmm. And you are, and anybody watching this, you are not, your, your, your symptoms are not your identity. Nope. You're, you're Shelly. I'm James. Yep. Like we are who we are. Um, and, and symptoms, like you said, you've said a couple of times of activities of daily living. Yes. Um, you know, you are not your disability. Um, right. You are, you, you are not this, you are a, a whole human. And, that's right. uh, I, and I think that that's what chiropractic does for people is it restores people back. But once again, people don't know where to go or who to trust. So I'm just going to share with you a little bit about how I help people. So I go find somebody like you, you fill out a half sheet of survey, you tell me who you are, where you're from, what's going on. Um, then you sign a date for me to give me permission to help you. And I say, okay, so, Hey, Shelly, how long have you been experiencing, you know, head trauma? Okay. Are you doing anything for it? Um, okay. Have you ever considered chiropractic? Okay. And um, then you would tell me these things. You'd be like, well, yeah, I'm doing some, you know, I don't know what you did, but I'm just going to throw out there. Maybe you did, uh, you know, a, a med for, for, for headaches. Maybe you did massage for neck pain. Maybe you did, you know, lock yourself up into a dark room. So you didn't have all these auditory like influences to make you feel more crummy, but I'll say, okay, thanks for sharing that with me. Well, you're an ideal candidate for what we do. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to get you in for your first two visits to come see the chiropractor, which I think is a great opportunity for you. First thing we're going to do, we're going to do a full um, uh, evaluation of you. So you're going to come in. We're going to do a full exam. We're going to check you from head to toe. Even things that you didn't check on this little survey with me today, you can talk to that doctor about that in confidence on your first visit. They're going to do the exam, consultation, health history, and then they're going to shoot any imaging that's necessary. So it's all included for this initial offer that we do for you. And mm -hmm. the second visit, you're going to come back. It's called the report of findings. We're going to tell you what we found. We're going to tell you how much concern there is. We're going to tell you how we can help you. At that point, you know what's really cool is we give you your first chiropractic adjustment. And mm -hmm. that's really how we make an impact on you. So you're going to come in for these first two visits. If you like us, you think we're a good fit, you'll stick with us. If you come in for these first two visits, you realize this isn't the right place and this, this isn't the right path for you. There's no strings attached for further care. But I guarantee you one thing, Shelly, you're going to like us. <laughs> and then I high five you. And I say, great news is, is uh, Matt's in the back here. He'll get you set up for your first visit and uh, we'll take great care of you. Thank you for letting us earn your business today. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Well, that was well done. Well inserted there. Oh, yeah. you don't have to convince me about uh, chiropractic because I found out the way that, uh, you know, but through, this, through my own this, experience. But this is what people need, though. Yes, they, they do. They need, they need somebody that's an enthusiastic thought leader to help them mm -hmm. and to be their advocate mm -hmm. and to convert them to a decision to help them. Because most people, they, they rely on their teachers, preachers, and, 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 and mothers and fathers to tell them what to do for their health. Mm -hmm. And they don't know that chiropractic is the one thing that they've never tried before. Mm -hmm. and, and just yeah, like you. I, I, I found it hugely. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, as an OT, I, I can't believe the overlap. Like I'm so excited to connect these professions because, you know, we benefit be, be, by learning about other holistic professions and working collaboratively with other disciplines who share the same principles and the principles are the same as myself as a yoga instructor and myself as a, you know, occupational therapist. And I'm like, wow, this is like practitioner that, that has the same idea, you know? <laughs> so that, that part was, it, it was super exciting as a professional and as a patient so, to, to find so, chiropractic. So a lot of times people are, are outside of the chiropractic world, but chiropractic is 127 years as a profession. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they built some foundations with uh, science, philosophy, and art. That's a triune of health within chiropractic. Yes. And a lot of times, um, if we don't own that truth, other divisions of the medical model pull from that and try to take ownership of that. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, I know that yoga and Ayurvedic medicine has been a, mm -hmm. around for a lot longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
But many times people don't know this, Shelly, is the first chiropractor was Canadian from Port Perry, Ontario. I did know that. His yes. Name is, his name is uh, Dee Dee Palmer. Yes. And uh, his first like resonance in this world, he was a magnetic healer. Yes. So then he realized that all sickness and disease is coming from the spinal column. Yes. And, and that's why we bring this full circle back to your chiropractic messaging now is mm -hmm. you went and saw the chiropractor, mm -hmm. they cleared out C1. And now mm -hmm. let's talk about let's talk about your road to recovery and some of the things that you did to, yes. start, feel, to start feeling better and complete again. Definitely. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, I did. I did. I. I um, it's this is the exciting part where it all uh, started to come together. It's the you hero's. Know? It's the hero's journey to recovery. Yes. Yes. Well, first of all, yoga. Okay. So. Um, I, you know, chiropractors see the spine as a whole unit. It's not like three parts, you know, neck, low back, whatever. It's just one whole beautiful, you know, <laughs> curve. And, and yoga, we, we see is the same way. We flow through the spine. It's not all separate. It's, it's, we move through. And so yoga was just such a great adjunct to keep my spine in alignment and in, in function the way a chiro had, had, you know, reset it. So yoga was huge for me. I hope that helps people sort of understand the role yoga. It fits so great with chiropractic that way. Um, so that's what I did a lot of yoga. I upped my training over COVID, used that time to really become intensively a yogi and design my own program, which I'll mention at the end, for post-concussion based on yoga. Um, then I... I'm a huge nature lover. I believe that nature heals. It fits with the holistic view. I live in beautiful British Columbia. So basically, nature healing is huge. If you don't find me in or on the ocean, you will find me in or on the nature trails. Or, you know, I'm running, I'm swimming. And if you don't find me there, you're going to find me on the pavement on my road bike. <laughs> so the power of exercise, again, coming from that holistic Cairo view and an OT view is like, is, is really um, using exercise again to support health from the inside out, right? We, we have our tools right here. We get our adjustment and then we keep everything rolling and moving and flowing through the nervous system. The with power, these great activities. The yeah. power that made the body heals the body. That's right. You amen to that. <laughs> so yeah. So so these are the things I did. Exercise. Um, I'm an adventurer. I did not let my concussion stop me. I remember getting on a plane to Bali thinking, oh my God, like I'm still in brain fog. I'm pretty concussed here, but I'm just gonna go to Bali and I'm gonna, you know, be safe and I'm gonna let myself experience joy because if I don't. I'm going to go in a deep, dark place. So, so there was that for myself, adventure and traveling. I like to take one, one of my um, family members just at a time because it was less complicated that way and more calming to the nervous system. So I'm always alert of that. Like just, I don't want to, you know, I, I, I want to heal myself, but I don't want to, um, you know, have go backwards. So I need to be safe, right? I don't want to have any more injuries. Um, what else? I'm also a very clean eater. So I absolutely eat local, nothing pro processed, low sugar, mostly plant-based, but I eat seafood because I live on the ocean. <laughs> so that's my one little, uh, and I, and I need the omega threes for in a big way for my brain, right? Well, the salmon that we have here would be a waste to not. So, um, <laughs> that's sort of, yeah. And, um, I'm what else I'd strict about my bedtime. Oh yeah. 10 PM, 7 AM. Do not disturb, uh, no technology. And because when I break it, I pay the price and sleep is a big part of brain healing and nervous system healing, as you know. So that was not something that I could compromise. And I learned that the hard way, you know? So uh, now I know if I want to feel at my best, these are the things I got to do. I got to exercise, be in nature, do my yoga, eat clean and sleep. So mm -hmm. have you ever heard of the uh, phraseology of having a sleep bank? Yes, I have. You yes. have to make nightly deposits. deposits. So, yeah, yeah. You have to make nightly deposits. Otherwise you'll go broke later in life. Yes. And a lot of times the studies show that if people aren't getting on average at least six hours of sleep a night, they're more chance to get uh, dementia and Alzheimer's. 100%. And so that's you, you have great to take, brain. Yeah. You have to take care of the brain through have that to. method of sleeping. Um, 
I know we're coming up on the edge of our time together today. We got about two minutes left of the okay. show, but um, if you could sit down with one person for an hour and have a conversation <laughs> over a cup of coffee or a meal or lunch or dinner or something, um, who would you choose and, and what would you look to get out of it? Great question. I love that. Um, so at this time, I think, I think Andrew Huberman uh, would be my guest to speak to. He's a neuroscientist and I love his podcast and I just love how he has such great answers to every question. It's kind of mind blowing how he knows so much. <laughs> I don't know if you listen to him, but I found neuroscience so interesting based on my experience and whatnot. And the second I'd have to pick two because I also have to add Deepak Chopra on there because he just has so much knowledge to share on meditation and how clearing the mind is kind of like, um, it helps us heal. And I think um, this applies to a lot of people with injury. So bringing these two things together, you know, maybe you bring the two of them in one room, that would be cool. But basically science and then the mindful spiritual peace. And I just, yeah, I, I think bringing those things together is what I'm all about. So if I can add one suggestion in there for you, yes. Um, check out uh, Patrick Porter. Okay. Um, he's the founder of BrainTap Technologies. Okay. And uh, I really love it. Um, I've done uh, like 560 brain taps in the past year and a half. Um, I think it's really powerful for meditation. Yes. Um, it's all guided. It's uh, it's really cool stuff. But um, you're talking about you know Deepak and Huberman. I think that. Um, Patrick Porter. Actually, we've interviewed him a couple times on the show. So you can find him on the Cairo Hustle podcast. Uh, amazing mind. I was just with him at the BrainTap conference or at the uh, biohacking conference in LA this past weekend. Yeah. And uh, he had a room full of biohackers and uh, he was doing guided meditations from the stage um, different times throughout the weekend. And just his command of communicating with people at mm -hmm. that level was so darn powerful. Um, Amazing. I will check and, that out for and sure. I, and I, I know we're, we've just gone over our 30 minute mark, but share with us some resources if people want to work with you or if they want to reach out to you or if they want to have you on their show. Yes, please. I would love to talk and tell my story more. It's taken me up to this point to be open about it and be able to share the details, um, getting, getting over past the trauma. Um, my i'm known as ot shelley you can find me on my website ot shelley facebook ot shelley instagram ot shelley and through that you can also join my post concussion recovery group that is um on facebook so you can anybody refer anybody who's had a concussion and is looking to for support in a positive way holistic way and then i do um I do see clients individually as an OT and a yoga instructor, and I do have a great new empowering 12 week program where I coach clients um, alongside whatever treatments they're getting. I coach them through yoga and daily activities for 12 weeks to really intensively um, jump them from here, from just surviving to thriving and post concussion. So I would love any referrals uh, towards that program as well. And that's where you can find me, OT Shelley. Please do look me up. Well, Shelly, it was a real pleasure to have you on to the Cairo Hustle podcast, episode 427 today. Um, I think that there's a, a wealth of knowledge that we were able to share today. And I was able to act as the expert talking about chiropractic a little bit. And I never get to do that because I have such esteemed guests and that's their lane. And I let them stay in their lane and talk about what makes them powerful, important uh, as a chiropractor. And I never really have to feature myself as the chiropractic expert. So <laughs> um, thank you for allowing me the space to feature myself as the chiropractic expert, along with your occupational therapy uh, systems, your yoga systems, and your recovery story. Thank um, you so was, much. Yeah, it was really a pleasure to get to know you and uh, to be able to share your story to our audience today. And uh, I'm going to close out by telling everybody, um, you're just one story away. Keep hustling and uh, reach out to OT Shelly on all of the socials that she has out there. She's mentioned. And uh, thank you so much for being my guest today. And I want you to have an amazing day up there, as you say, in beautiful British Columbia. Thank you. I will. You too. <laughs> thank you, James. Right. Bye, Bye for, for now. now. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.